Our next speaker today is Sarah Klieger from Adaptive Seeds. Sarah began working on organic farms in 2003. In 2009, she and her husband, Andrew Still, started Adaptive Seeds, located near Sweet Home, Oregon, two hours south of Portland. Adaptive Seeds offers organic, open-pollinated, diverse, and resilient seed varieties for ecologically-minded farmers, gardeners, and seed savers. Over 85% of the varieties in the catalog are grown on the farm. Sarah's roles at Adaptive Seeds include management of both the fields and the finances. Let's welcome Sarah. Hi. Uh, thanks for coming and thanks for the introduction. So um, I'll tell you just a little bit more about who I am and what we do and then um, I'm, I'm going to share some stories of how uh, my husband Andrew and I have connected with farmers in other countries and um, shared and collected seeds. And then I'm going to jump into the nitty gritty of using the small lots of seed permit from the USDA. So um, this is just a picture of our field. As mentioned, we grow a lot of seed on our farm that's uh, pretty close by. Uh, adaptive seeds we mostly sell online at our website at adaptiveseeds.com and we have a few seed racks around. Um, we started as just nerdy apprentices on farms and uh, got really interested in seed mostly when we saw this. This slide makes it into every slideshow that we give, uh, the, the slide of inspiration. So um, this is from the garden seed inventory from the 2004 edition. And uh, the slide is showing the availability of open pollinated varieties of cabbage, um, commercial availability through the years. So in 1981, you can see there was nearly 140. And by 2004, there were less than 40 of the original varieties and then a, a few new ones got added. And this is happening across all crop types. I'm sure many of you are aware of this trend already. Um, and we saw this and as a plucky 20 somethings, we thought, oh, we could do something about this. Um, and uh, so in 2006 and 2007, um, we decided that we were gonna be like this guy. <laughs> and, um, and do what we could to save seed. These are lentils and sunflowers. I think he's got some millet on there. Lots of cool seeds um, and advocating for saving seed. We met this gentleman in Wales um, on our travels. So we decided we were going to take our winter seasonal unemployment and travel in northern and eastern Europe and share seeds um, and collect seeds and seed stories. Um, so we started with some seeds that were near and dear to us that had been bred in Oregon, uh, stuff bred by Alan Capular, Tim Peters, um, and some other interesting varieties. And uh, we didn't really know what we were going to find, but we were hopeful that we could connect with people. and. There's a lot of people interested in seed around the world, actually. Um, and it's one of those things that, like, if you find someone else, then there's an in instant kinship there. And um, the connection is, like, beautiful. And I think it's one of the, one of the great bridges um, of humanity is through seed. Um, and the thing is, when you show up places and you're sharing seed, then people are really excited to share seed back. So our first trip, we went to Northern and Eastern Europe and we were focusing on winter vegetables, but we've since taken um, numerous other trips. This is Thailand. This woman was very excited to share with us her precious gourd uh, seed, which we tried to grow several times. Did not quite work out um, here in Oregon. It, needs a much longer season than we have, but um, we graciously accepted this gift. And I would say that in every instance, we always ask, is it okay for us to sell this variety from the people who are giving it to us? And we've never had someone say no. Usually people are very excited to have their seeds uh, carry on and be distributed more widely. 
Um, it also helps to uh, lend a hand when you're traveling. So um, this is also in Thailand. Uh, Andrew pitching in to irrigate. Um, we've also helped hoe fields. This is in Italy. And um, this gentleman, Alberto Olivucci, he's in Italy. He was really excited to share his seed with us. He's the only person we've encountered who wanted nothing to do with our seed because <laughs> his seed was the best. So why would he want it anymore? <laughs> um, and he was a member of a sort of seed savers exchange equivalent in Italy. So, you know, um, there's lots of formal and informal networks that you can access while traveling. So looking up um, seed saving organizations in countries that you go to, contacting small seed companies is another great one. Um, they frequently have unique varieties. Uh, this is Matana from Green Net Seeds in Thailand on a separate trip that we took last year. Um, we met Matana here at the conference two years ago and um, she is an excellent farmer, um, the only organic seed company in Thailand. She started uh, with the help of GreenNet as kind of a larger farmer cooperative. And um, they have a lot of organic farms in Thailand, but no organic seed. And so they um, decided to help Matana start this, this seed company. And so we uh, collected some seeds from her. You can see there's some tomatoes in the background that we grew out. Uh, this year and some eggplant and um, also uh, this is one of my favorite things on the farm. I like I really like to drive on crops. Um, <laughs> this is how I thresh things and so we also pitched in and helped Matana with some bean threshing. Um, this was very novel for me. Usually I use a beat up old farm truck and also the steering wheel <laughs> is on the other side. Um, so little bit of a skill share there, a uh, different technique than what they had been using, which was just stomping on the beans. Um, but this is a very tightly wrapped snap bean that was, I mean, probably many of you know that type, just real tough to get the seed out. Um, I don't recommend doing this necessarily for all beans on all surfaces, though. You will crack some, so. Uh, but it's fun when it works. Um, and I also just wanted to give a nod quickly to uh, seed swaps as a great place to get diversity. This is CD Sunday in Brighton. It was at the time the largest seed swap in the world um, in England. And the things that you pick up kind of go both ways. I really loved this gentleman. I, I learned a new technique from him. Um, he's got tomato seeds proudly displayed on toilet paper. Uh, um, and his seed saving method is to just spit out the seeds while he's eating it and just plant the teepee uh, directly. Um, not the most professional way, but it also makes for really easy distribution. Um, you just hand out <laughs> sheets of the toilet paper. Um, so, yeah, traveling is a really great way to connect with people, to collect seeds, to learn new things. And um, I think we did sell one or two of his tomatoes, um, although we had to repackage them. Um, this was not acceptable uh, for the USDA importation <laughs> requirements. Um, so in traveling and collecting seed, uh, you wind up with lots of little accessions. Here's a pro tip, bring your own Ziploc bags. We brought what we thought were enough, but then we wound up collecting like 1,500 accessions on our first trip. Yeah. <laughs> um, and having to repackage them, and we found these little tiny plastic bags. Um, Ziploc bags are not a universal thing. Uh, so then having to import all of this back into the US was a whole nother situation. Before we left, though, we prepared ourselves by um, going, obtaining a small lots of seed permit through the USDA APHIS. And it's 
really a very easy application process. Uh, online, it's just like a page or two. Um, it's free. The turnaround time is just a couple of days, except the hard part is your first time getting one, you have to present yourself and a photo ID at a USDA station. So once they verify your identity, however, everything is very quick and easy. Um, so if you just do a web search for uh, USDA small lots of seed permit. This is the page that it will take you to with the details. Um, and, oh right, this is the uh, presenting yourself for <laughs> uh, identification. This is uh, a long time ago, but okay. So here is um, the copy of our, oh. What was the mouse that Nate was using? Right here. Um, so here is what the one of the pages of the permit looks like, and you can see down here at the bottom. Um, we just selected every country except Canada. Canada's got a different set of rules, uh, and instead of selecting every species, because you never know what you're going to find, eligible taxa is an acceptable thing to fill in. And um, yeah, so with this. Uh, you can get, yeah, here's the details of it. Um, small lots of seed program, eligible taxa, list of, this was our first permit, um, mostly since we were just going to Europe, we just had European countries there. Um, seed for propagation, and uh, the first time we did this, you had to designate, a, designate what port you were gonna import stuff into, and now I think you can send them to any one. I just got my new permit application approved this morning, so I didn't have time to make it into the slideshow, but um, it's changed a little bit uh, since this, but the permit conditions are essentially the same, and I won't read this all to you, but it basically says, um, you can import small lots of seed, only of taxa that are generally admissible under the regulations, um, to be imported without a phytosanitary certificate. So that's the thing that's really brilliant about this, is that you can get around the phyto requirements, um, but it's only if you meet all of the following conditions. You have this permit, you have this green and yellow sticker that they send you, or that you can, you can download now, it's digital. Um, you have to send it directly to an APHIS quarantine station with a copy of the permit, and uh, the seeds must be securely packaged and labeled with the genus and species, the country of origin, and a bunch of other little details. And you have to also have a bill of lading or a printed seed list with all of the information. And the maximum amount of seed that you can have for each accession is 50 seeds or 10 grams. Um, so it's a pretty tiny amount. Um, and then you can have more than, no more than 50 packets in each shipment. So sometimes um, while we were traveling, we would break down larger accessions into multiple shipments so that we could get more than the 50 seeds in total. Um, but right, no, no, no. Yes, you have to mail them from abroad. Um, yeah, this, there's a whole different thing if you're trying to bring in seed on your in your luggage. Um, that's not what this is. You have to mail it from the country that is on your permit. You're also supposed to be in the country to receive it. So um, maybe have somebody else mail it or mail it and then hurry up and fly home. Um, the seed must be free from pesticides, soil, plant material, um, pathogens, et cetera. And then, right, when the USDA inspects it, they have the right to destroy it um, or return it. And uh, as long as you're following the rules, they don't, I mean, we, we sent 1,500 accessions through this system and we had like three things rejected um, because we mostly followed the rules. Um, so, yeah, also no GMOs. Did I say that yet? Um, right, so packaging it all up and creating the bills of lading is kind of a nightmare. Um, not really, but it's a headache, and then having to print things while you're traveling, sometimes harder than you want it to be. Um, 
And then you're also responsible for getting it from the APHIS station to your, into your hands. And so you have to set up a FedEx or something account and give them prepaid labels so that they can mail it to you. And so um, the cost can add up for shipping if you're not like close enough to go pick it up yourself. Um, and uh, the other thing is, you know, we did also collect quite a few commercial packets and they came in these really cool things, packets with pictures and you know, they, you can't send that. So then we're also keeping all of this stuff for our own records and then sending these. Um, so this is a picture of one of our accessions and it's, this one in particular is really exciting to me because there's like 20 seeds in this bag and we have grown probably a thousand pounds of this variety over the years. Um, and right, that's part of the magic of seed. Um, that yeah, from just a little, you can grow into abundance. So I guess I should say here that when we started our seed ambassador's trip, the first one, we just were like wanting to collect some cool varieties to grow out back home and we had no inkling to start a seed company. Um, and then at some point it was like, well, we have all these seeds and we need to get them out. And seed company seems like the best way to do that. And so our first trip, um, those varieties are the foundation of adaptive seeds. It was just sort of a momentum thing. And they're oh. designated in our catalog, the varieties that we've collected. It has a little SAP logo on it. And also on our website, there's a tag so you can see which varieties we've collected. Um, this is uh, the Tuscan arugula that we sell now. It's a pretty great variety. Um, so another source of seed is institutions. And um, you know, people that work at universities are generally pretty enthusiastic about the plants that they work with. And um, this gentleman is uh, in Lithuania and he had been a plant breeder since Soviet times and he totally understood what we were doing and he told us stories about how um, he would go when he, on trips uh, to conferences and stuff and like make his fingers sticky and then he would like touch the seeds and kind of like get them stuck to his fingers and then just kind of like <laughs> stick them in his pockets. And it wasn't permitted for him to bring anything back because of course everything in Soviet Russia is the best and why would you need anything from outside? Um, but he would bring stuff in and um, he was very excited to share things with us. Um, and we were very excited to receive them and we sent them through our small lots of seed permit and then we got this emergency action notification um, because millet related to corn on the verboten list. Um, so you can see it says the, uh, well I guess it just says what the species is here and that it was five grams and they, um, they rejected it because of the species. And uh, then it was like, well, do you want us to return it? We'll, then you have to pay to return it to Denmark, which is where we had sent, or Lithuania, I don't even know. Yeah, Lithuania in this one. Um, and yeah, it was like, well, okay, I guess just destroy that, um, which is part of, the deal that you sign up for with this is knowing what the rules are and playing accordingly. Um, but uh, that seed did find a way to come in. It is in our catalog. Someone helped us get it in. And um, yeah, it may or may not have been in an article of clothing. Uh, <laughs> it says uh, save, sew, and grow on his coat if you can't see it. Um, yeah, so that's that. Thanks.